I get um, a lot of students come to me, and I think it's just by the nature of, of my job, a lot of them don't really know how to effectively study, you know, like work smarter, not harder. And so Purpose Games is a good example of the best way to study, and that is to be doing something that is interactive and, and is not this passive form of learning. If, if you're, for example, studying anatomy, uh, and that's what I recommend this website for really the most, but I think you use it for biochemistry or, or other purposes as well. Sky is kind of the limit because it's user generated and therefore its content is constantly growing. But um, never be just passively looking at your textbook. Never be just passively looking at your notes. Always be doing something that is um, active, that is involves you, you know, really pushing yourself. And so um, this is a website called Purpose Games that uh, been recommending for pe to people for many years and I just never made any videos on it and um, so let's say I wanted to learn anatomy of the heart um, I can come to this oh and here's a good image labeling the heart okay so I, I, I press play I have a timer here so I can time myself that's nice and it's asking me to find the left subclavian artery and let's say that I forgot where that was for whatever reason and so I click here and I said oh nope uh, but I know that that's the intraventricular septum I get it wrong again uh, that's the left ventricle, I get it wrong again, that's the chordae tendine, and then eventually it's going to change color saying, yes, this is the left subclavian artery, I click on it, ah, it's red, so I know that that's something that I need to study a little bit more. Um, whereas, let's say for finding the interventricular septum, I click on this, ah, it's green, I know I don't need to study that anymore because I know what that is, and so this is a great way of self-assessment, but also a much more active way to learn things. Now, uh, I'll quit that for a second. No, I didn't finish. One of the, the best parts about this is the fact that you can create games, and I'm hopefully going to show how to do it. It's really easy. So let's say I wanted to just create a, a quiz just like what I, we had saw with the heart. So I'm going to browse my computer. Okay, so I just went ahead and got myself an image of a spliceosome. Um, the only thing that I would say is that they are kind of pricks about copyrighted material, which I feel like the nature of the website, if there wasn't ads on it, would probably be able to do things without copyrighted material. But anyways, um, that's the only stipulation that I would have with this. But anyways, I'm going to click upload to upload my file here. And um, there's my image, Spliceosome, kind of uploaded twice, but we'll go with this one. Spliceosome here. So. Step two is creating the game. For example, I'm going to title it uh, in this context. I'm going to go with uh, messenger RNA processing as the name of my game. Pick a category, science, why not? Can you pick the messenger RNA processing? So now I'll just say, can you identify the reactants? That's what I'm saying there. Okay, so the way that this works is you just click on it. So say, for example, exon 1, and then, ah, a little dot will pop up, and I'm labeling that as the exon in this case. And then there's this intron here. I'm going to label that as my intron. And then I cut out form. I'm just going to call that the intron lasso. And then I'm going to, oh, snap, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to get rid of that. And then this bad boy here is, oh, it's kind of telling, collectively known as the spliceosome okay and so I'm done with my game I'm going to create it, it has four questions save um, and then publish